Mirroring in Fabric is now available for Azure SQL Database, Cosmos DB, and Snowflake. Learn all about how easy it is to get set up, and once you're set up, how easily you can take advantage of everything that Fabric has to offer. This week on Data Exposed. Hi, I'm Anna Hoffman, and welcome to this episode of Data Exposed. Today, I'm joined by the SQL Product Group members, Anaga and Idris. Folks, thanks so much for joining us today. Hey, thanks, Anna, for having us over. I'm Idris. Uh, I'm the principal PM here for uh, the mirroring for Azure SQL DB in Fabric, and we are super excited to be here. Uh, I've been with Microsoft for a little over two years and been working on this product, which is super exciting. Awesome. Hi. Cool. Anaga, go ahead and introduce yourself. Excited to be here. My name is Anika Todelbagi. I'm a product manager on the Azure SQL database team. I'm working with Idris on Fabric Mirroring for Azure SQL DB. Awesome, cool. And we're super excited to have both of you here. Mirroring has been something really hot that people really want to know all about and they want it for all their data sources. Um, but for folks who don't know what this is, um, Idris, can you kick us off and tell us a little bit of more, more about mirroring and the announcement? Sure, absolutely, yeah. So. We announced uh, Fabric Mirroring uh, for SQL DB last month at a Fabric Conference event uh, in Las Vegas. And, uh, you know, one of the key things about um, wh why it's called mirroring and, and it's a reflection of your data from your underlying operational database and sources into your analytical platform. Uh, essentially, it cuts down your time to, to get analytics and insights from your data. So let me share a little bit and, you know, uh, uh, talk to you a little, a little bit a little bit about it and, and show some demos around it as well. So awesome, cool, yeah, we'd love to see kind of like how it works and then actually see it in action. All right, so as we were talking about, you know, mirroring uh, for databases overall has been announced in public preview last uh, in last conference. Uh, we have three major sources: we have Azure SQL DB, Cosmos, as well as Azure Cosmos, as well as Snowflake. Essentially, it integrates into the Microsoft Fabric platform. Uh, at which the heart of that is the Microsoft the One Lake, which here stores all the data in the Delta Parquet format. As you said, mirroring replicates the data to Fabric uh, with, without any ETL, we call it zero ETL. Also, there is zero cost to mirror into Fabric. So there is no zero cost to co for compute from taking your data from your operational databases and landing into Fabric. Also, there is free storage based on your Fabric capacity. So if you had higher storage, you would get a higher storage capacity specifically allocated for mirroring. And so, as I said, data is replicated into one lake and kept up to date in real time. And uh, it protects your operational databases uh, from any analytical queries. So, a little bit digging a little bit deeper, how does this work? So, on uh, you have the Azure SQL database. Uh, on the right side, you have the fabric uh, with one lake and uh, various engines, which get also light up once the data is available. But under the hood, it, it uses the uh, the change uh, the change data uh, architecture and the stack where it actually takes the data and scans the transaction log and any incremental changes which are happening, it writes it to Delta Parquet uh, in a one lake storage and gets converted into Delta Parquet. Uh, it also creates a analytics endpoint for which from where you can actually do your querying and actually create your um, uh, queries against Power BI or uh, Lake uh, Lakehouse, et cetera, and all the other engines get, get sparked up. So uh, that's, that's essentially what it does. Also it does is initially does an incremental rep uh, replication, it also does an initial snapshot of your data before it starts it, and then uh, it writes all the data in the Delta Parquet format as well. Cool, this is awesome. I see like a lot of use cases where you have something running in Azure SQL database, and now mm -hmm. you wanna take advantage of the data and the insights in Fabric, and this is a really easy way to get started. Um, Anaga, I'd love to see from you, like how easy is it to set this thing up? Sure, I'm happy to go over a demo. All right, as you can see the screen uh, here, I'm gonna get started with the demo. I'm gonna show how we're going to be able to mirror Azure SQL database in Fabric. You can see my database e-commerce. You see that this is a general purpose type uh, with a four week core. And when we click on monitoring, you see the stats because this is an application that we're running live currently. Next, we're going to see how we're going to set this up. Uh, we, we're going to uh, look at the dashboard, and then we're going to click on more options now. And we scroll down to the pane for mirrored Azure SQL database. 
We click on that. We add the name of our Miro Azure SQL database. We're creating the database now. So here we're going to pick the database that we want to replicate or mirror. So I'd already set up the connections. That's what I clicked on. Here I have the option to mirror all of the data, or I can decide to pick just some of the tables. So now I'm going to be able to see all of the tables. So I can pick and choose like which ones I'd like to replicate. But as part of this, I'm going to mirror all of the data, and I'm going to click on Mirror Database. So now we know that we it's running and it's ready. Here we have the status. We can see all of the tables that have been replicated. We see the number of rows. It's about 165,000 plus. Now we're going to go back and see how many rows our table has. So I'm going to run a select count, and we see that it's a similar number, 165,000 plus. Next, we're going to try a few more things. Uh, we're going to see how we would be able to make some changes and add another table. So I'm creating another table for employees. And I'm going to add a few more rows to this. And now, we don't have to make any changes in terms of I wouldn't have to update anything, but I would be able to go back to my mirror and see that I have been able to replicate in all of these, all of the new entries as well. So now I'm going to go back and see. And I see that the number has increased from 165,000. So this shows that we have all of the new entries as well that are already mirrored here. And we do not have to run anything, no separate pipelines. Uh, the mirroring option took care of everything for us. We also see the new employee table here. Cool, that's it for the demo. Cool, awesome. Anar, I love how easy it is to get started. And then also I love that if you choose to mirror the entire database, even if you add new tables or if you alter certain tables, in accordance with what mirroring allows, it just works. Um, I'd love to just ask a couple questions. Maybe I'll just keep it to the one that comes to mind. Like, I, I'm really curious to understand from either of you, like, how does this compare to change data capture? Like, we talked about it on the show before, like, maybe folks are familiar with CDC. Like, is this the same thing? Yeah, so great question, Anna, and thank you, Anna, for the demo. So essentially, what it's the, there's a similarity and there are differences. So the SQL uh, has a capability called change data capture, which uh, which writes, uh, which scans the transaction log and takes the data and it writes it back into the SQL database. That's SQL CDC. Mirroring does similar. It takes the, reads the data from the transaction log, but it writes the data into a, a different storage. In this case, in Fabric One Lake. So it doesn't have a double write thing. So that's one of the biggest differences between CDC and and mirroring. But essentially, they're based off the same uh, architecture and principles. Cool. Awesome. Well, I've learned a lot about fabric mirroring already. I'd love to know, like, are there other things I can do with fabric once I'm in, once I've got my data mirrored in Parquet, or other things you think would be interesting for folks to see? Absolutely, yeah. Uh, in fact, I'd like to show a little bit more about uh, once your data is in fabric, what are some of the things you can do? In this case, let me run through the demo here. I can go and create a new shortcut or a new area called uh, Lake House within data engineering. I'm going to give it a name just like how I'm going to show it and create it in a new mirror. I'm going to create a Lake House here. And what we're going to do is we're going to show you how to how to bring the data which you just mirrored and, and you can then do perform some querying. So we're doing some initial setups here. So let's look at uh, and let's get some data and create a new shortcut here. We're going to go to the Microsoft One Lake for the mirror which we just created. And we're gonna select the tables which you want. In this case, these are all the data points, which all the tables which in the mirror, in this case, we're gonna select them all. And it also creates an analytics endpoint. You should just show it uh, popped up on the right side. And now we're gonna go create it. And there we go. It's as easy as that. The data is all pointing to your mirror. None of this data is being actually being copied or created again. It's the same data in one lake. We're also gonna to go to AWS and we can also get the data from S3 
You get data from buckets which for objects which are not public, and you can set it up as well. It's very simple. Provide the credentials and and, and just bring it into um, the, the Fabric platform. So what we can do is once the data, which we've have, we have already got this data into uh, the AWS data into one lake, into Fabric, let's go create another table, right? And they said we're creating a new call log table for the uh, uh, the sales uh, e-commerce database, which we just really saw that earlier. And we've added some new rows to it. So you see the table is available here. And uh, we're going to create, uh, let's go back and see, create a shortcut against that table. We saw earlier how to create a shortcut. We're going to create a shortcut for that specific table again. And once the table is in there, we're going to go and create some uh, uh, reports against that. So let's uh, see, once it's there, should we hit a refresh sometimes? Uh, there you go. And you should see that table comes in here. Uh, we'll go switch over to the analytics endpoint and go create a new report here. So it'll ask you for uh, the semantic model. In this case, we're gonna take all the data available across all the tables uh, in, in our mirror and we're gonna continue. And it pops you over to the Power BI, uh, the workspace uh, builder out there. And you can see in this case, I'm leveraging Copilot where I'm like, you know, tell me a little bit more about my data set, right? And Power BI actually tells you, this provides details about sales operations, information about sales calls, et cetera. And you're like, you know, create a page that shows me, it gives me a view of the entire data with specific ask about sales calls and product descriptions and sales orders and, and um, create some reports around it that tracks effect in those sale calls. And here it is. Power, Power BI with Copilot has just created a few reports without you creating any objects or dragging any of this information. As you can see, the calls which are there, there are eight rows in there, right? And now we're gonna do is we're gonna add some more rows to it. And in this case, we're gonna add around 400 plus rows uh, and it inserts it, we have 447 rows. And instantly, just we go back again and just behind the scenes, the CDC is in action. Now we're gonna go back and refresh it and there it is. You'll see around 400 plus rows in there, exactly what it is there in the operation database. We can also go ahead and actually say, you know what, let's remove some of the widget and add some insights. And this is really, I love this thing. I've been using this a lot. You can give an executive summary, uh, a bulleted list of insights uh, and say, provide me some key takeaways. So as a data analyst, I'm, you can talk to the business leadership and, and highlight these. And you can say, it tells you a commentary about which specific area, what are the key insights, uh, from from this data, you can also add some more filters specifically to say, hey, I want this for a particular set of person or this particular set of salesperson. I need to uh, get some more insights, and you can do that as well. And you can see in this case, I'm, I'm specifically looking at Jillian's uh, data set and getting some very specific and detailed insight on the two calls which were made by the salesperson during the time frame. So, and in, in, in a nutshell, you can see right from setting up the mirroring the configuration, bringing in an additional source, and then deriving those insights. Zero ETL, reduced TCO, and faster time to insights, Anna. Awesome, that's great to see. It's really cool how, again, like once you easily, like Anagra showed us, once you easily get set up with the mirror, then you can take advantage of basically everything Fabric has to offer without moving any data, without having to go in and manage pipelines. So really awesome to see this technology and awesome to hear that it's in public preview. Um, I know there's still some things you all are working on or some things you're looking for feedback on. Any final uh, thoughts on the roadmap that you want to share with us? Yes, absolutely, Adam. I mean, there's some really exciting stuff. Uh, what we are, we, are, we are getting into is providing more capabilities on your data definition languages. So for example, you will be able to do changing of your data types of your table schema. You'll be able to truncate the table. You'll be able to drop a table. You'll be able to do a lot more uh, of these DDL operations, which all of customers have asked and looking for additional data types, uh, a lot of network, networking and security enhancements. Also, there have been asked for where customers have you know, tables which has no primary keys and they want the ability to support those uh, mirroring of that table uh, without no with no primary keys, and that's coming up. And uh, we are working on uh, uh, capabilities of bringing the other SQL family of products as well, SQL on-prem, SQL on VM, uh, SQL MI, they're all coming up with uh, the deeper integration of SQL with Fabric. 
Awesome. Cool. Well, thanks so much, you guys, for coming on the show. I learned a lot. I think our viewers probably did as well. Um, if you're a viewer and you're using Azure SQL Database today, go ahead and try this out. It's available in public preview. And depending on when you tune in, maybe some other status of it. Um, if you like this episode, go ahead and give it a like, leave us a comment, and let us know what you think. And we'll put some links in the description for you to learn more. And we hope to see you next time on Data Exposed. <laughs>